a little bit delayed, but today we're heading out and it's early summer. It's fantastic weather forecast today. And we have high hopes in what we might find. The ocean was absolutely alive, which is pretty typical in sort of your upper North Island around this time of year. Lots and lots of school fish on the surface, mainly consisting of trevally, big kohiru, and some kawai. This is something we really take for granted here in New Zealand, because it's not something you see in a lot of places around the world. We just get masses and masses of school fish during summertime. When encountering these schoolfish, often the first thing I like to do is try and get below them. You'll notice fishermen will often fish underneath workups on the surface, catching snapper and all sorts of other fish that are hanging around underneath. Of course, it's no surprise for there to be a few lurking kingfish that were chasing either the koharu or some of the other smaller bait fish. When diving the schoolfish and you're trying to spear a kingfish, try get below the schoolfish. That's most likely where they're going to be hanging out. On this day, the swell was really, really big and the surge was unbelievable. Even when you were right down deep on the bottom, I was getting thrown around all over the place. It was really difficult to stay in one spot. Ideally, I'd like to hide amongst this kelp here, but I'm finding it really, really difficult with the surge. When you come up from a dive and you're hunting kingfish, make sure to give yourself a little bit of oxygen to play with, as often you'll get fish will swim up to you on the way up. The schoolfish kept lingering around and I tried to work my way out to right on the edge of them. The demoiselles are normally a really, really good side for that. And of course below them as we came over the edge, there was big schools of pink mau mau. And something I spotted amongst these pink mau mau you'll soon see is a sneaky guy that's gone and hidden in a hole. There's a really big golden snapper. Golden snapper typically caught in really, really deep water by fishermen. They can be really, really common. But some places where we go spear fishing, if you do look well enough, you can find them in sort of under 30 meters, sometimes really shallow. This one here was in a cave at about 20 meters and he didn't like me too much and started heading for the deep. Often I do like to leave these things alone as they do have lots of bones, so sometimes can be difficult to eat, but they do taste nice. But on this occasion, it did look like quite a big one. And it was a great opportunity for Sophie with this one being in slightly shallower water to have a go at getting one. A lot of people will go their whole spearfishing career not seeing a golden snapper. But if you head further north, up around the Three Kings, they're very, very shallow and very easy to spear. In the Haraki Gulf, golden snapper can be a little bit more difficult to come by, especially bigger ones. They'll typically hang out alone and quite difficult to spot. As soon as you get past sort of 40 meters in fishy spots, you do tend to see a lot of them, but mainly small ones. Sophie makes sure to make no mistake on this big one. Point blank shooting it at about 25, 26 meters. A golden snapper is an interesting fish for sparrows as they're not particularly difficult to spear when found, but often since they're associated with deep water, people find a bit of kudos when they shoot them.
On the bottom again, it's a beautiful spot, this with lots and lots of big pink Mau Mau, Demoselles, and you never know what might pop out of the weed here. Sophie's going to add a nice pink Mau Mau to our catch now. A good relaxed approach, and if you're sparing pink Mau Mau, if you can get down to their level, they tend to be really, really friendly if you lie on a rock or even get below them. Here are the big koharu again as they came racing past on the surface. There's such a good indication of bigger fish around, especially when they're lit up and all yellow. That means you'll most likely have things like kingfish chasing them or even big snapper. I've been seeing quite a few snapper amongst all the schoolfish, but they were moving around a lot as that surge on the bottom was quite incredible. The fish didn't really want to park up on the weed or anything. When approaching snapper and other species, there are lots of different ways you can try and get close to them. In some instances, I like to get down to the bottom here as I've been seeing the snapper up in mid-water, so I wanted to try and approach him from below. Fish tend to not be as threatened if you can get below where they're hanging out. You see the snapper come in, but I'm just really uncomfortable on the bottom. I'm trying to hold myself in place and the kelp stalks are just a little bit too long. It's making it difficult for me to lie there as well as angle myself. Option two is approaching snapper from above and drifting down on them. This is actually sort of an easier option, but often people don't like it as it's a difficult shot as you're shooting at a very small profile. What you can't see here is I'm tucking myself right in and I'm barely kicking. Snapper gonna react to your body language. So if you can, try and keep yourself really, really narrow and don't make too many crazy movements. You've got to try and envisage how you look to the fish. The more narrow your profile and the less threatening you are, the more likely they are going to let you to get close. And this is not just specific to snapper, this is all fish. I'm not committing to a certain approach. If I can shoot a snapper on the way to the bottom, I will. Otherwise, again, I'm going to try and get down in the weed and see if I can get one from below. This approach can be really difficult because you need to make sure you're facing the right direction and place yourself in a really easy spot on the bottom, neither of which I'm really mastering on this particular dive. Again, I'm pretty uncomfortable. There's enough surge on the bottom, I'm struggling to hold myself in place and burning way too much oxygen trying to do that.
I can see a good snapper coming in, but I just don't quite have the breath hold. And now another tactic, I'm going to snoop over this drop off here and see if I can see a snapper parked up. This is a really common approach for looking for snapper as it tends to be the easiest one and require the least breath hold. There's a lot going on here and I do feel like there should be something here somewhere. You actually just saw the snapper tail come past my head. It sort of came out of nowhere. It sort of come from above me. It didn't seem to be too bothered by me. Time to move spot and go check somewhere else. As I've talked about in other videos, one of the most important things to do is get in the water before everybody else. You're more likely to get the fish doing that. Don't muck around on the boat. Here's a great example where Sophie will show you how to dive in the surge. Notice that she's not fighting against which way the water's pulling her. Trying to move with the water movement is going to be the most conducive way for getting yourself in a good position like she has here. Being able to adapt where the water's going to move you is really, really important. Otherwise, if you're fighting against the water movement, you're just going to burn lots of oxygen, make lots of commotion and scare fish. The dive made for really beautiful sights with all these big pink mammal congregating on this rock. I'm trying to keep myself as calm as possible because if I make any sort of jolting movements, I'm going to spook all these fish. Now, although it only seems like there's sort of demoiselles and pink mau mau mainly here, if you do find a really fishy spot like this with current pushing on it, it does pay to stay there, as other fish will congregate and come past, like these big kohiru. We've been seeing them all day, and normally if I'm going to shoot one to eat, you wait till later in the day, so it doesn't need to spend too much time in the chili bin. You see how all the kohiru are lit up, there's no doubt going to be some kingfish here. And of course as soon as I shoot one you'll see the kingfish come racing in. So if you do want to help your mate out when you're diving in a pier, and there's a big school of kohiru and you're looking for kingfish, shoot one of them, as often that'll attract the kingfish in the area, that appear out of nowhere. You'll see here as Sophie makes a dive to inspect.
again, I'm hanging around that rock that has that really thick school of pink mau mau. And all of a sudden, a school of trevally hang around as well. They've been really, really spooky this dive, which was quite bizarre. So I took a quick shot to try and get one. And you'll see they take off. Not only was this a great spot to shoot some other fish, it was also just an awesome spot to lie in the bottom amongst all the beautiful pink mau mau. Trying to shoot these midwater snapper amongst other species is really good practice. It'll make you refine your technique, not only being a good shot, but also approaching fish out in the open. Sink slowly, this is why you want to weight yourself really correctly so you don't have to kick too much. I've got my nice light Weedy Reef Pro carbon gun about 110 centimeters. So important because I'm able to maneuver it in place nice and easy and very smooth release and accurate. I'm just doing one more dive on these pink mau mau before we go. It's quite interesting, dirtier water was starting to upwell in the spot making it really dirty down deep. You'll notice the change in the color. Having one last scan over the spot, I spot something in the distance, a familiar sight that's pretending to be a piece of weed. One of the best eating fish in the ocean, a John Dory. So you see, even though on the very first dive in the spot, it only appeared that there was demoiselles and pink mama hanging around, but we did stay there for about an hour and then all of a sudden there's some good kingfish, then there's some trevally, then we have John Dory, there was snapper, all sorts of other species will come hang around these spots. Be patient when you're diving. Back on the boat, the big golden snapper Sophie shot looked like a really good size one. So we had it weighed when we got back it's a pending woman's New Zealand record. A great fish and an even better day.